Continuing with my videos on the topic of marine radar, today I will be talking about the target characteristics and target reflectivity. I'll also talk about uh, the radar reflectors and radar transponders, SARTs, which are search and rescue radar transponders, and I'll compare uh, the 3 to the 10 centimeter radar. If you have been watching my videos on the radar, uh, that's fantastic. Otherwise, the links to the previous videos are given in the description section below. Make sure you watch those videos. Um, watch all the videos on the topic of the marine radar to get a good understanding of this topic. All right, so don't just watch this video. Otherwise, you will not know what we are talking about. So let's get started. Uh, the ability of a radar to detect a target will depend on the following factors. Uh, optimum adjustment of the radar controls, peak power of the transmitted pulse, and the characteristics of the target itself. The characteristics of the target itself is the factor that will be considered mainly in this presentation. In order to determine the strength of the echo, any target is likely to return the following target characteristics must be examined in detail. That is the target size, the target shape, the aspect of the target, the material of the target, as well as the target texture. So let's get started with the target size. This is the least important consideration. Echo strength can be can only be as much as lies within the beam width, both horizontally and vertically. A small object which lies inside the beam will not return as strong an echo as one which fills the beam. So when we talk about the beam width, we're talking about the beam width of the radio waves which are being transmitted by the radar scanner. However, a much larger object cannot produce a stronger echo than one just filling the beam. What is considered here is not the size of the echo on the screen, but the actual intensity or strength of the echo produced. The larger echo will naturally show up larger on the display screen. There are few objects which could fill the vertical beam except possibly mountains. Here again, a high mountain will not necessarily produce a stronger echo. The shape of the mountain chops up the pulse and only returns one at a time echoes which lie within the pulse length. The echoes increase in range showing the slope of the mountain, but they remain similar in strength. A target's shape will affect the strength of the returning echo by determining the amount of energy which is reflected straight back to the antenna. The reflected echo must travel in the reciprocal of the pulse direction if an echo is to be detected by the radar. As a pulse hits a target, there will be reflections of in many directions, but only the reflection back to the antenna is of course detected. If the pulse hits the surface straight on, then it will bounce directly back, but if it hits at an angle, a large part of the energy will be directed away from the antenna. And only a very weak echo will bounce directly back. Let's consider some of the shapes of the target. The three shapes to be considered is the sphere, cylinder and cone. If I talk about the sphere, the sphere will return or only return an echo from that part which is at right angles to the beam. A very small reflecting point in the center. The rest of the pulse is reflected outwards and away. If I talk about the cylinder, this is this like the sphere will only reflect from the part which is end on to the radar beam. In this case, a reflecting strip. If the cylinder is laid horizontally, it will still reflect from the strip along the center, but only if the cylinder is lying at right angles to the radar beam. The cone is of course the worst radar reflecting shape. It reflects all the radar energy upwards and away. If I talk about the target aspect, this is the most important condition affecting the condition of the echo. When discussing shape, the most common shape was left out, namely the flat plate, which can be either the very best or the poorest reflector depending on its aspect. Aspect is the angle of the plate to the radar beam. When it is flat onto the beam, maximum energy will be reflected back and a strong echo will respect result. If the plate is at any other angle than 90 degree, then the return will be considerably less. Here is an example. If two plates are at 90 degree to each other, a corner reflector is constructed, which if a pulse is directed into the corner from any angle, 
the echo will be reflected straight back in the direction from where the pulse originated. Here is an example. So you can see here how the shape is being detected by the radar, the aspect, how the aspect of a target makes a difference to its interpretation on the radar screen. Surface texture, whether a surface is rough or smooth will dictate how good a reflection is available from a target. The texture is a function of the wavelength of the pulse. A surface which reflects radar waves poorly would have indentations or facets are of the same order of the radar wavelength, that is 3 to 10 cm. It should be noted that objects which appear rough to radar waves can improve the response of a target with a poor aspect. The material that an object is constructed of will have an important effect on echo strength. Metal is the best reflector which is closely followed by water. Because water is a good reflector, particularly of 3 cm radar waves, waves and rain or other precipitation will cause cluttering of the radar display. Wood and other organic material is not a good reflector but some materials like perspex and fiberglass are completely transparent to the radar pulse. From this discussion, it can be seen that a radar's ability to detect a given object will vary considerably. The most important factor is the aspect. A large 100,000 ton tanker at an angle to you may not give as strong an echo as a fishing vessel beam on to the radar pulse. A fiberglass yacht would give a reflection of the mast, wet sails, engine and the people inside and hence would not be a strong echo. Conical objects such as navigation buoys may give weak and intermittent echoes. Mountains and coastlines will vary in their echo strength due to shape and material as well as height. Certain areas of land will give stronger reflection than others and therefore care must be taken while trying to identify targets. Let's start talking about radar reflectors and radar transponders. Poor radar uh, Responses particularly from navigation marks and small craft can be improved by adding a radar reflector to them or by attaching transponder device which will provide an identification signal. The word transponder refers to a wide variety of devices which are triggered by the radar pulse and then sent back an identifying signal. They are particularly useful for showing up objects which otherwise may be difficult to identify. The most common type of transponder is of course the Recons operates by being triggered by a radar pulse and transmitting its own pulse which is both longer and more powerful than the radar's transmitted pulse. The typical Recon flash is elongated and can be coded with Morse identification signals. Recons must activate on the entire marine radar bandwidth and can be designated 3 cm or 10 cm or both. The Recon with search through the bandwidth using a slow sweep pattern which takes about two minutes. The recon will thus respond to your radar signal for only a short period of time, about 20 seconds every two minutes. The recon will actually show up on the radar screen when the equipment is not correctly tuned, so should never be used as a tuning indicator. Here is an example of a recon transmitting the Morse signal alpha or the letter A which is read DA. It is the short flash of course and that DA is the longer flash. In terms of search and rescue radar transponders, they are fitted on many crafts and it is a mandatory requirement for certain classes of craft with the implementation of the GMDSS or the Global Maritime Distress and Safety Systems. Working in a similar manner to the Recon, but they are portable and powered by batteries. At the moment, they will only work on 3 cm radar. A feature of the beacon is an audible or visual signal to allow the survivors to know there is an operational radar in the area. The increasing strength of the signal would indicate the search radar and vessel is coming closer. The SART flash on the research radar is very distinctive, that is a series of 12 blips originating at the SART location and moving away from the antenna location.
Performance monitors are also called echo box located within the aerial drive unit. Fitted with a short length of waveguide tube below a horn. It sends every sweep of 20 to 20 pulses are sent into the horn and shows on the radar as a plume. Referred to as the performance monitor as it monitors the performance of all units of the system. The main difference between the 3 and 10 cm radar is the wavelength and the frequencies. Of course, the one uses a wavelength of 3 cm and the other uses a wavelength of 10 cm. The C clutter is more shown on a 3 cm radar than a 10 cm radar. The C clutter where targets with strong echo, that C clutter that is saturating display will show on 3 cm when a sensitivity time control is used. Rain clutter also shares or other shows more disturbance on 3 cm than on a 10 cm radar. The 3 cm radar gives better picture resolution than 10 cm at close ranges, that is entering the port. At present, SART will only show on 3 cm radars. Uh, before I finish this video, I actually want to talk a little bit about uh, why this thing happens. So if you have not seen my previous videos, you will realize that because a 3 cm radar only sends short pulses of 3 cm, that is why the sea clutter and rain clutter is more profound uh, on the 3 cm radar. Whereas a 10 cm radar sends uh, very long pulses of 10 cm, the wavelength is 10 cm, they are long pulses, they penetrate through the larger distance, has more amplitude to it, it is aimed for targets which are further away and that is why the sea clutter and rain clutter is not so profound on the screens of the 10 cm radar. They are more mainly used for uh, further away targets. Uh, I also want to talk about the radar reflector and the radar reflector, the basis of the radar reflector is three plates at right angles, which gives it the ability to reflect a strong signal over a wide angle, both horizontally and vertically. In order to cover all possible angles, radar reflectors are usually arranged in clusters. The most common sort is the octahedral cluster. This type is commonly used on small craft and navigation masks. The orientation of the cluster is most important. The octahedral cluster should not be mounted point upwards, rather it should be mounted on an angle in the catch water position. Uh, I think I have pretty much covered all the essentials of the radars now. I don't have any more videos, if I'm not wrong, to show about the radars. Uh, so now I'll put up a couple of videos about the ARPAs, that is the automatic radar plotting aids. And hopefully you will have a good understanding of the topic of the radar and ARPA and in combination you will be able to answer any exam question if you are faced with any. Uh, however, if you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section. If I get the time, I will definitely answer your questions. I try to answer most of the queries and the questions, but I get a lot of these queries. So it takes me time. Moreover, I am also busy making these videos for you guys. So please forgive me if I don't answer in time. All the best with your study guys. I'll see you soon with my next video which will be on the RPAS. Thanks.